We're going to look at squares and square roots in this video. So I think you know what a square is. I'm going to draw some squares here. A square, of course, has the same side length and the same width. So this is a square because the side length here is 2 and the width of this square is 2, the same. So there's one. I'm going to draw just a couple more here. Um, let's go with a let's go with a three by three, and we'll do a five by five. So this has a side length of three. This has a side length of three. This square here has a side length of five, and this side length here is also five. And I think you remember that the area of a rectangle or the area of a square is length times width. So if I wanted to find the area or how many uh, units are making up this square here, I would go length times width. So the area of this one would be 2 times 2, length times width, and 2 times 2 is 4. Of course, we could count them 1, 2, 3, 4 as well. Um, but mathematically, we can find it by going length times width. On this one, the area would be 3 times 3, which is 9. And on this one, the area would be 5 times 5, which is, tw which is 9, this one, and this one, which is 25. So area is length times width, and um, we've done that for these three squares here, 4, 9, 25. Now, instead of writing 2 times 2, or 3 times 3, or 5 times 5, what we can do is we can write this as 2 to the power of 2, or 2 squared, and this one would be 3 squared, and this one would be 5 squared. 2 squared really just means 2 times 2. So this little number that you see up here, which we call an exponent, tells you how many times to multiply this number together. So 2 times 2. This one is saying I need to take the number 3 and multiply it by itself 2 times. So 3 squared means 3 times 3. And 5 squared would mean 5 times 5. And you could even do things like this. Say we had 4 to the power of 3. Well this would mean we got to take that number 4 and we got to multiply it by itself 3 times. So 4 to the power of 3 would mean 4 times 4 times 4. We're not going to do that in this particular course, so we won't worry about that. We're just going to look at squares. That means the exponent is 2. So don't make the mistake that 5 squared equals 5 times 2. That's not the case. 5 squared means 5 times 5. This number here tells you how many times to multiply this number by itself. So 5 squared. So really, when you look at something like this, 2 squared means 2 times 2, which is 4. So when we square a number, we're actually kind of finding the area of the square. So 3 squared is 9. 3 times 3 is 9. That's like the area of our square. 9. And 5 squared means 5 times 5, which of course is 25, which would be like the area of a square with side lengths of 5. So the square of a number means to multiply the number by itself. So when we see 6 squared, what that really means, means is we've got to take the number and multiply it by itself. So that means 6 times 6. And 6 times 6 would be 36. Three squares that we were looking at earlier. So on this one, remember we had 2 squared equals 4. 2 times 2 equals 4. This one, 3 squared equals 9. 3 times 3 is 9. And on this one, we had 5 squared equals 25. 5 times 5 equals 25. Well, we have a special name for these numbers, and they're called perfect squares. And a perfect square is just a number that you could write as something 
times something. So 25 is called a perfect square because 25 we can write as 5 times 5. That's what makes it a perfect square. It's the area of this square, 25, 5 times 5. So if you take 1 and you square it, so if this is your side length, we'll call this the length. So if the length of your little rectangle or your little square is 1, then the area 1 times 1 would be 1. If your length is 2 and we square that length times width, we get 4. 3 times 3 would be 9. 4 times 4 would be 16. 5 times 5 would be 25. If you went with a side length of 6, 6 times 6 would be 36. If our side length was 7, 7 times 7, 49. 8 times 8, 64. 9 times 9, 81. And 10 times 10 is 100. So these numbers down here are what we would call perfect squares. So let's look at this question. Is the number 16 a perfect square? Well, we have a few ways we can do this. We can simply look up here and say, yes, it is, because this was the list of perfect squares that we generated. Or we could say, can we draw a square? So can I draw a square that has an area of 16? So here's one with 1. The next biggest one would have 4 squares. Then if we went to side 3, that would be 9. If we went to size four, sides four, then yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So sixteen is a perfect square because I can make a square that has sixteen little pieces to it. What about the number twenty-one? Well, we can see twenty-one's not in our list here. And if we try to make a square with an area of 21, it's not going to work. There's 4, there would be 9, there's 16. The next one is going to be 25. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. We're supposed to only have 21. I mean, we could chop this part off. And yes, here's an area of 21 now, okay, if we didn't have this piece. We would have 21 dots here, but this is, this is not a square. And it's got to be a square, a perfect square. So 21 is not a perfect square. A way that we can, we can um, look and see if numbers are perfect squares uh, without necessarily having to draw draw squares to see if it works. There's another way that we can look at identifying whether numbers are perfect squares. So let's look at these three here, 16, 36, and 21. If we look at these three numbers and write, their, write them as a product of their prime factors, that's another way we can determine whether or not they're perfect squares. Remember, a prime number is a number where you can only divide it by itself or 1. So 3 is a prime number, because you can't divide 3 by anything except itself and 1. 11 um, is prime number. You can only divide it by 1 or 11. 8 is not a prime number, because I can divide it by 2, and I can also divide it by 4. So that's not prime. So usually we did these little factor trees. So I know 16, I can divide that by 2. And when I take 16 and divide it by 2, I would get 8. Now 2 is a prime number, so I'm going to circle that because I can only divide 2 by uh, itself, 2, and by 1. But 8 I can divide by 2, and that would leave 4 left over because 2 times 4 is 8. 4 is not prime, so I can divide 4 by 2. That would be 2 and 2. And these are all now prime numbers. So I can take the number 16, and I can write that as 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Okay, let's look at 36. 36 is an even number. I can divide it by 2. That leaves 18. 18 is an even number. I can divide it by 2. That would leave 9. 
9 is not an even number, but I can divide it by 3, and that would leave 3 left over. So my prime factors of 36 are 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. And then we'll do 21. 21 we can divide by 7, and that leaves 3. So 21 is, and those are both prime numbers, 3 and 7, so 21 is 3 times 7. Now, when you look at these three numbers, we already know that the first two are perfect squares because they were in our list of numbers. But notice when you look at their prime factors. C16, 16, 16, all of their factors are showing up in pairs. I've got two groups of two here, and I've got two groups of two here. If you look at 36, there's a pair of twos, and there's a pair of threes, and there's nothing left over. All the factors, occur in pairs. All the factors occur in pairs. Whereas in 21, there is no pairs of factors here. One that would be a perfect square is if we could go 3 times 3 times 7 times 7. Whatever this number is, let's figure it out here. 3 times 3 times 7 times 7. 441, big number, but I know that 441, this would be a perfect square because when you prime factor it, all the factors occur in pairs, but this is not a perfect square. So perfect squares are kind of cool numbers. They're numbers that when you draw a square, Whatever the area is would be a perfect square. The other thing that's cool about perfect squares is when you do their prime factors, all the factors will occur in pairs. So just to review perfect squares, perfect square is a number that you would get when you multiply the same two numbers together. So for instance, if I had 5 times 5, or we could write that now as 5 squared, we know that that's 25. So 25 must be a perfect square. If I went 8 times 8 and got 64, 64 is a perfect square. The other way we could look at perfect squares is we could say if we had some squares, let's say this one was 2 times 2, then a perfect square would be the area of this square. So the area is 4. 4 is a perfect square. And if these ones had side lengths of 7, 7 times 7 is 49. That's the area of that square. 49 is a perfect square. And then the other thing that we know is that when written as a product of prime factors, perfect squares have factors that all occur in pairs. So like we looked at um, the number 36, we could write that as 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 when we did our factor tree. And the prime factors all occur in pairs. So those are some of the properties of perfect squares. So here are a few questions that we can answer that deal with squares. First one, what's the area of a square with a side length of 9? So if we were to draw a square that say and call this side 9, this side 9, then we know that the area is length times width, which is 9 squared, which means 9 times 9. So the area would be 81. 9 times 9, 81. What's the square of 12? So that's 12 squared. 12 squared means 12 times 12. Square of 12. 12 times 12 would be 144. What's the square of 4? So 4 squared, or we can say 4 to the power 2. 4 squared means 4 times 4, which is 16. And again, if we had a square, what that means is length times width, 4 times 4, 16. And here we go again, a square piece of carpet. So everything squares. It has a side length of 6 meters. 
what is the area of the carpet. So we've got six meters on this side. We need to obviously then have six meters on this side because it's a square piece of carpet. And area is length times width. So this will be six squared or six times six. And six times six is 36. And just remember when we're dealing with units, that our units also end up being squared now. Meters by meters is meters squared. So those are squares and what we call perfect squares.